Without making a sound, Lu Sheng entered Lian Su's room. She extended her hand towards him and tried to ask for help, but he began to stare at her and his eyes filled with revenge. This woman had tried to harm him several times and had even endangered his family, so he had no reason to feel pity. And although this method of assassination was cruel, he had no other option. Lian Su, who was lying on the bed, began to run out of air, foam started coming out of her mouth and her eyes filled with tears. She put one hand on her neck while extending the other desperately trying to ask for help. Our boy started watching her and upon seeing that she was suffering, he began to smile and mentioned that he wasn't any saint, just an ordinary person with some sense of justice and a bit of resentment. At that moment, a demonic energy appeared behind Lu Sheng. Upon feeling this energy, his eyes filled with fear and confusion. He knew better than anyone that this was not good. He lowered his head, and his gaze filled with terror, as only a martial saint could give him this sense of death threat. In a matter of seconds, Lian Su began to faint and slowly started to close her eyes. He began to observe her and remembered that he had the ability of premonition which warned him of possible crises that could affect him or those around him. A level 9 martial saint should have a similar ability, so it was time to change plans. While his body was emitting a blue energy, he began to extend his hand toward Lian Su. He couldn't continue torturing her as it could attract the attention of the Supreme Martial Saint. If he got trapped here, it would be a big problem. He brought his hand closer to her and clenched his fist tightly, and without an ounce of compassion decided to kill her right then. He began using his power, causing a powerful black energy to appear, which wrapped around Lion Su's neck, slowly suffocating her. Upon feeling this, she regained consciousness and tried to scream but was unable. With a calm look on his face, our boy decided to withdraw since the warning he felt in his brow had diminished considerably. In a matter of seconds, Lian Su lost her life, and at that moment, the maids began to approach the room and one of them asked the other to speak more quietly since she was sleeping. Upon hearing this, Lu Sheng began to use his power and disappeared from the room at the speed of light. Slowly, one of the maids who was holding a tray with a glass of water opened the door and their eyes filled with confusion, as they did not know what was happening here. Not long after, they realized what had really happened, and the maid dropped the tray on the floor, causing the glass to break. Panic flooded everything and they started screaming, informing that Lion Su had died. At the same time, in the province of Kyoto was the mansion of the Chen family, where Ling Su's grandfather's birthday was going to be celebrated. The mansion was full of important and powerful people. Among the crowd there were two women talking to each other. The sexy woman with pink hair put her hand near her mouth and with a happy look revealed that even a martial arts master had come to celebrate old Chen's birthday. For her it was a great honor. The woman with gray hair crossed her arms, closed her eyes, and with a smile mentioned that old Chen was a master of martial arts who knew many important people. Some of his friends were even level 8 grandmasters in the army. Three beautiful women appeared, and they began to show a kind smile. None of them had ever seen an 8th level master, and upon hearing that an 8th level master was going to be present, they decided to make an effort tonight since if they managed to capture the attention of someone important, they would win a big prize. Among the crowd was also Ling Su. Her expression showed disappointment. She couldn't believe this was high society. The women started enjoying the birthday party, while on the other side, Ling Su crossed her arms and with a calm look thought that this was very boring and remained silently observing. While she was lost in her thoughts, someone extended a hand towards her and noticed that it was Ling Su's first time being part of such an important party, realizing that she wasn't used to it, advising her to enter together. Upon hearing this, she snapped out of her trance and with a surprised look began to wonder what was happening. He was her cousin named Yi, a tall man with long hair. He extended his hand towards her and invited her to enter the party together, but she started shaking her hands, and with a nervous expression refused since she was waiting for a friend, asking him to go in first and that she would enter in a while. He started to observe her and couldn't help but feel somewhat surprised since he didn't expect her to have friends in Kyoto. The man decided to meet her friend later. After saying this, he put his hands behind his back, turned his back on her, and began to walk away. She began to look at the man and sighed, and with a sad look thought that ever since she had arrived home, the attitude of the Chen family had been quite kind. Chen Yi had also been very attentive with her, but she always felt that he was not someone trustworthy. While she was distracted, someone asked if she believed that this guy wasn't a good person and had other intentions. Upon hearing this, she snapped out of her thoughts and with a confused expression began to wonder what was going on. Someone wearing a white shirt started approaching Ling Su. She began to turn around and with an earnest look explained that she had that feeling. 
this person was none other than Lu Shang. She turned around, and upon seeing him, became happy and couldn't help but smile when she realized he had really come. Lu Shang approached her, closed his eyes and with a smile reminded her that he had promised to be there to support her, and naturally he had to keep his word. He began to observe her with a calm gaze. He was very proud of himself since from Lian Su's mansion to the Chen family mansion there were at least about a thousand kilometers of distance. He had covered them in less than five minutes, being ten times faster than the speed of sound, realizing that this spiritual power was very good. Ling Su closed her eyes and with a sincere expression she mentioned that she didn't need him to back her up as this wasn't like in novels, revealing that in reality the Chen family had treated her quite well, and although there was still some distance between them, they had already begun trying to accept her. She opened her eyes, and with a sad gaze she began to look to the side. But at that moment, our boy approached and with a serious expression revealed that what they were trying to accept was her fortune. She raised her head, placed her hand near her chest, started observing him and her eyes filled with surprise. She began to gaze at the ground and explained that returning always requires paying a corresponding price. Our boy remained calm. He had thought that he Ling Su had a personality that would make her fight until the end but he hadn't thought that in the end she would choose to give in. Considering the environment in which she had grown up, maybe she really needed a fake family to fill the void in her heart, and although he could understand it, it didn't mean he was going to approve of it. He turned his head back and with a firm look, decided not to think about the matter and make a better decision for her tonight. While he was observing something behind him, Ling Su placed one hand over her chest, extended the other to one side, and with a confused expression asked what did he mean by this and what was he looking for. Lu Sheng found his target and with a smile mentioned that he was looking for an unfortunate person who shone brightly. Upon hearing this, Ling Su's gaze filled with confusion and surprise. She began to sweat as she didn't know what Lu Sheng had in mind. With a calm look, Lu Sheng started to stare at his target and asked her who that guy was. She turned her head to the side, began observing the target, and remained silently thinking. A man who seemed quite wealthy appeared. Beside him were two beautiful women. Seeing that young Master Zhuo had arrived, the butlers bowed their heads before him and welcomed him with a smile, indicating for him to enter the party. Zhuo started walking towards the entrance, Lu Sheng and Ling Su began to observe him and she revealed that this guy was Zhuo Yuman, the second son of the Zhuo family. The Zhuo family was one of the most influential families around Kyoto, they even had a bit more power than her Chen family. This guy wasn't a big deal, after all he was just a playboy, but on the other hand his older brother, Zhuo Jilin, was indeed somewhat important. Upon hearing that she had just said she was part of the family, Lu Sheng started looking at her and it caught his attention. She became nervous and her gaze filled with surprise, she didn't know what was happening. Lu Sheng took her hand and explained that she was being surrounded by useless things, just obstacles that would smooth out her path toward true strength. He closed his eyes, and with a kind smile asked her not to worry since he was going to take care of solving all this perfectly for her. Seeing that Lu Sheng had taken her hand, Ling Su began to blush like a tomato. Lu Sheng let go of her hand, turned his back on her and with a confident smile started walking away. Ling Su was left frozen and her expression filled with confusion. Two men approached Zhuo, the older man who was from the real estate agency, and the other man tried to talk to him. But Zhuo closed his eyes, started shaking his head and with a tired expression ordered them to leave. But at that moment, someone appeared in front of him. Zhuo extended his hand forward and with an angry look ordered him to step aside. This was none other than Lu Sheng. He didn't even pay attention to him, and with a calm expression remained silent. Upon seeing Lu Sheng, Zhuo's gaze filled with surprise and he couldn't help but be left speechless. Lu Sheng began to stare at Zhuo with a piercing look, making him start to feel fear. It didn't take long for him to realize that his physique, his appearance, his bearing, everything about him exuded an oppressive sensation that left one breathless. The arrogant Zhuo ran out and hid behind some women, leaving them somewhat confused. With a serious look, he asked our boy who he was. Behind them was a luxurious car. Lu Sheng moved to the side, started looking at the car with a curious gaze, and asked if it was his car. Zhuo put his arm around the women's necks and with an angry look replied yes and asked why he was asking that. With a surprised look, Lu Sheng thought the car was very nice and asked how much it had cost him. Zhuo began to observe Lu Sheng and couldn't help but start smiling. He felt relieved knowing that this talkative guy had only approached because his new car had caught his attention. Zhuo crossed his arms, closed his eyes and with a proud smile explained that he had bought this car for more than 80 million. And obviously it was something special since there was only one in all of Longyuo. Upon hearing that this car was worth more than 80 million, Lu Sheng's gaze filled with joy and he couldn't help but start smiling. 
Liu Shang approached the car and with an incredulous expression began to touch it. Zhuo, who had his arms crossed, approached him and started smiling as his gaze filled with joy upon realizing that he was a true talker. Lu Sheng began to gaze at the ground and with a smile praised the car but apologized. With a serious look, he started to release a powerful blue energy and said that this car made him feel a bit envious. Upon feeling this, Zhuo was somewhat confused and went on alert, as he didn't know what was happening. Without thinking for even a second, Lu Sheng jumped on top of the car, crushing it as if it were a can. Seeing this, both Zhuo and the other guests were in shock. While the car was emitting smoke, Lu Sheng got off it, started observing it and couldn't help but smile mentioning that now he felt a little better. Obviously, Zhuo didn't like this, he got angry, put his hand on Lu Sheng's shoulder and with a look full of rage, gritted his teeth, called Lu Sheng a friend and asked what he meant by this and if he was looking for trouble. Lu Sheng started to look at the ground and remained silent. Lu Sheng began to release energy, turned around and with a piercing gaze asked who Zhuo was calling friend. Upon feeling the energy, Zhuo started to back away and realized that this wasn't good. Lu Sheng's energy began to expand everywhere. Zhuo started looking up at the sky and upon seeing this, he was left speechless as his gaze filled with fear. While Lu Sheng's body was surrounded by suffocating energy, he turned around and with a serene expression introduced himself as he links Su's friend from the Chen family, adding that if he was upset, then he was welcome to seek him out whenever he wanted to settle things. Zhuo began to retreat, Lu Sheng started pointing backward and with a serious look revealed that he Ling Su was behind them. Everyone's eyes filled with fear and curiosity, and they all turned around asking why he had so much audacity. Behind them was He Ling Su, she started pointing at herself, and upon seeing that Lu Sheng was blaming her for everything, she got nervous. Zhuo's luxury car, which Lu Sheng had crushed, was now in flames. Poor Zhuo put his hands on his head and started screaming in panic, while on the other side, our boy silently watched. Everything was going according to his plan. He links whose eyes filled with confusion, causing her to start sweating. She didn't know how to explain this or why Lu Sheng was acting this way. Xuo fell to his knees on the ground and began crying. He Lingsu, who was behind Lu Sheng, started watching him and her expression filled with panic because she knew this wasn't good. Now that the situation had escalated, Lu Sheng closed his eyes, began hitting one hand with the other hand and with a smile apologized to Zhuo explaining that he couldn't control the feeling of envy. Obviously, this made Zhuo furious. He turned his head towards them, and while his body was trembling and his face was full of tears, with an expression filled with vengeance and fury he swore to remember the names of He Lingsu and Lu Sheng to make them pay for this in the future. He Lingsu began pointing at herself with her finger and with a confused expression asked why she was being involved in this if she had nothing to do with it. Just before she could continue talking, Lu Sheng gently placed his hand on her hip, closed his eyes, started walking towards the mansion and with a confident smile asked her not to pay attention to Zhuo. He Lingsu put her hand over her chest and she couldn't help but panic and started sweating profusely. While poor Zhuo was kneeling on the ground lamenting the loss of his luxury car, Lu Sheng and He Lingsu began walking towards the entrance of the mansion. A white-haired man who was at the scene began to observe them, and his gaze filled with fear. He didn't know who Lu Sheng and He Lingsu were or how they had dared to provoke the second young master of the Zhuo family. According to him, Lu Sheng was someone impressive who left people wanting more. A while later, Lu Sheng and He Lingsu entered the mansion, which was very luxurious, and it was full of important people. Now that they were inside, He Lingsu, who was somewhat upset, placed her hand on Lu Sheng's chest and pushed him, and with a serious expression asked what he was trying to do. Lu Sheng remained calm, began to observe her and started thinking silently. He knew that if he didn't convince her, things would go wrong. He Lingsu got angry, and with a look full of rage she reminded him that he had just wrecked Juo's car, and had also provoked him verbally, and for no reason at all he had even involved her, getting her into trouble. Our boy didn't lose his composure, sighed, started to smile, and with a serene expression mentioned that this didn't matter since he only wanted to lend her a hand. He Lingsu's mind filled with questions, she put her hands on her hips, started staring at him and asked why he wanted to lend her a hand and what they had done for him to be defending her asking him to at least give her a reason. Lu Sheng began to observe her with a smile. Several seconds later, he put his hand under his chin, looked away, and started to think of a reason. Seeing this, He Lingsu couldn't help but start getting even angrier. But to her surprise, Lu Sheng began imagining Zhao capturing her to have some fun with her at night. Our boy approached her, started pointing at her with his finger and with an expression full of confidence explained that Zhuo didn't seem to be just a playboy. Today she had dressed very sexy and beautiful so she was definitely going to catch that guy's attention. 
making him have malicious intentions and he would do anything to get her. He links Su's gaze filled with fear and confusion, and just before she could think about it, Lu Sheng gently placed his hand on her head. Then, he approached her, started looking into her eyes and with a kind smile mentioned that this was how it was always said in novels. He was doing this to prevent a disaster from happening, adding that there was no need for her to thank him. Upon hearing this, she became even more confused than before and with a lost look responded yes. The innocent He Ling Su believed what Lu Sheng was saying. She gave a thumbs up, started observing him and with a serious expression praised our boy by saying that he was incredible. In the main hall of the mansion, there were some elegant tables for the guests to eat. The party was about to begin and all the guests, some rich men, others powerful and very famous, began to enter one after another. Among them was a man wearing earrings. He was Zhuo, with a penetrating gaze. He began to silently observe Lu Sheng. While Lu Sheng and Yi Ling Su were happily conversing with each other, her cousin Chen Yi appeared. He started looking at Lu Sheng and couldn't help but start smiling as he had been searching for them for quite some time. In the blink of an eye, the room filled with people. Chen Yi began approaching them, closed his eyes and greeted He Ling Su with a smile. Upon hearing his voice, they stopped talking and their attention focused on him. Chen Yi approached them, started staring at our boy, extended his hand towards him and with a smile asked He Ling Su if she wasn't going to introduce her friend. He had heard that after arriving, our boy had wrecked Zhuo's car and also blamed the Chen family. He was really impressed. Lu Sheng didn't lose his composure, began observing him with a calm expression and couldn't help but wonder who this guy was. He Ling Su started sweating and with an indecisive expression began to think, she didn't know what to say about it. Lu Sheng closed his eyes, put his hand over his mouth, started asking him to stop praising him with the other, and with a smile thought that he had a very interesting way of speaking. Seeing Lu Sheng's attitude, Chen Yi's gaze filled with confusion. He began to stare at him wondering why he was laughing. Lu Sheng opened his eyes and while his body was emitting a penetrating aura, he began to stare at Chen Yi asking if he was insinuating something. Upon feeling Lu Sheng's aura, Chen Yi couldn't help but feel chills all over his body, realizing that he was not someone normal. Chen Yi became alert and with a confused expression, distanced himself from them, becoming nervous as he didn't know what was happening. Seeing this, Yi Ling Su who was standing next to Lu Sheng became somewhat confused. The look on poor Chen Yi's face filled with fear, he began to gaze at the ground causing him to start sweating. He was a respectable level 6 warrior, but couldn't even withstand a glance from Lu Sheng. He took several steps back, began to look at Lu Sheng with an expression full of terror, and his body started trembling upon realizing that he was the outstanding student of the 7th Martial Academy, a rare genius in martial arts with hopes of becoming a master. Chen Yi did not decide to fall under the pressure of Lu Sheng and threatened him by saying that the Chen family had connections with a great level 8 master. Lu Sheng began to observe Chen Yi and remained silent. A great level 8 master was nothing compared to him. Chen Yi realized that messing with Lu Sheng wasn't good, so without hesitating for a second, he turned his back on them and started fleeing the area, and while sweating like crazy, he swore that Lu Sheng would regret what he had done today. Chen Yi thought he was now out of danger, but once he looked down his eyes filled with fear, he didn't know why he couldn't keep running. Suddenly Chen Yi's body began to float in the air. He tried to move but was unable to. He didn't know why his body was floating or who was responsible for this. Obviously it was Lu Sheng. He extended his hand upwards and activated his mental strength, making Chen Yi's body start to float in the air. He mocked him by asking where he thought he was going to escape. Chen Yi panicked upon realizing that Lu Sheng was behind this. He started sweating even more and tried to ask He Ling Su for help. She and the others began watching him and were left speechless. Lu Sheng's body began to emit an intense aura, and with a piercing look, he asked Chen Yi if he was insinuating something and why he was talking nonsense. Just before Lu Sheng could do anything, He Ling Su approached him, clenched her fist tightly and with an angry expression ordered him to let Chen Yi down and not cause any more trouble. With a calm look, Lu Sheng began to observe her and remained silent for several seconds. Then he closed his eyes and decided to listen to her. He turned his head back, and using his finger threw Chen Yi's body aside and with a smile said that He Ling Su's wishes were orders for him. She panicked when she realized that Lu Sheng had thrown him into the banquet hall. Chen Yi's body was thrown and forcefully hit the table where the banquet was, causing everything on the table to fly off. Due to the strong impact, within seconds, he opened his mouth and lost consciousness. Upon hearing the sound of the impact, all the guests approached to see what was happening and were terrified when they saw him unconscious. He links whose gaze filled with fear, thinking that everything was lost. She lost her composure, put her hands over her face, and her eyes filled with despair. Everything she had worked so hard for these years had gone to waste. 
At that moment, someone asked the others to step aside since the second son of the Zhuo family was going to do the job. Upon hearing this, He Ling Su and Lu Shang's attention shifted to one side. Both were somewhat surprised as they didn't know what was happening. A bunch of furious guards appeared, and in front was the second son of the Zhuo family, who clenched his fists tightly and couldn't help but get angry thinking they were annoying people. He began pointing at Lu Shang with his finger and with an angry look said that he was the culprit. He started staring at our boy and mentioned that he was an arrogant brat who knew nothing about life, asking if he really believed that just because he'd won first place in the national tournament and had some talent, he was someone important. Lu Shang began to observe Zhuo and remained silent, while on the other side, He Ling Su placed her hands over her chest and her gaze filled with fear, thinking that this was not good. With a smug look, Zhuo mentioned that the only thing he had done was fall into Lu Sheng's trap, calling him a little coward and telling him to prepare to die. Zhuo's gaze shifted towards the beautiful He Ling Su. He stuck out his tongue and told her to wait until he finished with Lu Sheng because after that she would see how he was going to treat her. Upon hearing this, she began to feel chills, and with a nervous expression thought that this was not good at all. While on the other side, our boy crossed his arms and started to smile. Zhuo remembered that He Ling Su was an adopted daughter of the Chen family, and if it weren't for the Chen family's interest in her industry, surely Lu Sheng wouldn't even have the right to be at the banquet. Just before the situation could heat up any further, someone in the crowd raised their hand and called out to He Ling Su. Her attention shifted and she became somewhat confused. Mother He Ling Su, who was wearing an elegant dress, stepped forward and with a furious expression asked where she got these friends from, and if she was going to throw Lu Sheng out of here, mentioning that if she wanted to return to the Chen family then she should make him leave immediately. The mother tightly grabbed He Ling Su's hand, and both began to move away from the commotion. The woman turned back and with a sincere look asked her to come with her since afterward they were going to apologize to the second son of the Zhuo family to clear up the misunderstanding. He Ling Su, who was somewhat unsure, started thinking about what to do now. And just before she could make a decision, Lu Sheng caught her attention and with a confident smile mentioned that he had already told her, it was just like in novels, she was a prototype heroine. She would arrive at these kinds of events and become everyone's target, being attacked and oppressed by all. In the end, a villain would come along to rescue her. Upon hearing Lu Sheng's voice, she turned her head back, while on the other side, the mother got angry and started cursing him. Lu Sheng moved at great speed and made He Ling Su disappear, leaving the mother somewhat confused and terrified at the same time. He saved her from her mother's clutches, placed his hand on her shoulder, closed his eyes and with a smile mentioned that there would be no need for a villain to come save her since she had him. He Ling Su's gaze filled with fury, asking him what he was doing and mentioned that this had happened because of his fault. The mother lost her composure and got angry. With a gaze full of rage she asked He Ling Su to listen to her mother, giving her the order to cut all contact with him and come with her, promising that the family would protect her and forgive this mistake. Instead of paying attention to her mother, with an uncertain expression, He Ling Su began observing Lu Sheng and far from taking the Cheng family's side, she stood firm and with a determined look asked Mrs. Chen for forgiveness, explaining that she could not accept the conditions she had offered. The mother did not expect this, she became angry, started pointing at them with her finger, called He Ling Su spoiled, and gave the guards the order to catch them both. Lu Sheng hugged her, and with a calm look told her not to worry because she would not regret this decision, adding that what followed now was the most exciting part revealing that it was time to give them a good lesson. Having Lu Sheng so close made He Ling Su start blushing like a tomato. She couldn't believe he was doing all of this for her. This is the end of the video. If you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.